My name is Suzanne Amari and I'm an assistant professor of clinical psychiatry at Columbia Psychiatry. So the research I'm doing at Columbia is really focused on what are the causes that underlie obsessive compulsive disorder, otherwise known as OCD. The causes of OCD are still not well understood, and that was actually one of the main reasons why we performed the study that, that we're, we're discussing today. Because essentially, from human imaging studies, we know that there's increased activity in certain brain regions in OCD patients, areas of the cortex, which controls thoughts, areas in the basal ganglia, or a region called the striatum, which is very important in controlling movements. But the problem with human studies is we actually we know there's this increased activity in the brain, but we don't know if that's causing symptoms or if it's unrelated to symptoms, or it could even potentially be something that patients, uh, that people who suffer from OCD are doing in order to kind of uh, counteract the symptoms. So in order to actually get at this question of what causes OCD, we took advantage of new technology that's been developed, which is called optogenetics. So opto stands for light, genetics is the use of various genes, and when you put them together, what optogenetics allows us to do is to use light to actually turn on and off neural circuits in the brain. And so what that actually allowed us to do in our study is to, to essentially mimic the imaging findings that we see in people. So mimic the hyperactivity that we see in the cortex and in the striatum in a mouse model system. So essentially we can use these light activated channels to turn on and off circuits in the mice, in the case of this particular study, to hyperactivate one particular neural circuit going from the cortex to the striatum. For this specific study, the measure that we're focusing on is actually one where the mice are repetitively grooming themselves. And some other genetic studies that have been performed by other groups have suggested that repetitive grooming in mice can be linked directly to OCD and, and things like skin picking behaviors in people. What we did first was try to simulate the increased activity that was happening in the brain in OCD patients by using the optogenetic technology, which I had described. And when we hyper-stimulated this specific circuit from the cortex to the striatum, we were expecting that we were going to see an increase in abnormal behaviors. So we thought we would hyper-stimulate it, then we would see behaviors in the mice that are relevant to OCD. But what we found was really surprising. So that stimulation did not lead directly to repetitive behaviors. But if we repeatedly stimulated for multiple days in a row, for only five minutes a day though, what we got was the progressive evolution of repetitive behaviors, in this case, repetitive grooming behavior, that built to a large level and then stuck around even when the stimulation was stopped. So essentially doing this small intervention led to a pathologic change that led to abnormal behavior in the mice that, that was uh, persisted for a long period of time. So the exciting thing about this study is it gives us potential windows into how we might actually be able to intervene in terms of OCD treatments. And some, some things are already being done that are actually very relevant to the study which we've been done. There's exploratory treatments right now looking at the use of deep brain stimulation in OCD, where basically electrodes are implanted in the brain and turned on at various frequencies in order to alleviate symptoms. And the studies that we're doing could actually give us clues into what might be good treatment targets in order to actually put the electrodes in. It might also give us ideas as to which frequencies might be the best to use in terms of this stimulation. And what we're hoping actually is that by being able to go into the mouse system, we'll be able to get at new molecules, new treatment targets that ultimately might even be targets for novel drug development in the future.